Hello folks, Mundane Man here again, and today we're working on my 2012 Ram 1500, and it's got an eye out here. I flipped it to high beam, and both of them go off, so there's probably a filament out in the low beam, because it remains on in high beam, and also the high beam bulb must be out too. And, of course, being a 2012, they're 11 years old, so uh, surprisingly they lasted that long. Now, full disclosure, I did do the other side as well because it had one of the uh, bulbs was burnt out as well. Now, I've seen a couple ways of doing this. Uh, my way would be to just take out the headlight through the access points that we can get at. Other people have taken the grill right off to do this task and that makes getting this lower uh, nut or bolt, sorry, off of that uh, mounting point. And I'd like to thank the engineers at Chrysler for taking what should be a moderately easy job to uh, a medium difficulty job just because of some of the access points you have to get at. There's a, a uh, bolt um, way down here, a screw actually, that you've got to use a long extension for which I'll show, and then there's an access panel in the wheel well where you have to um, slide a retainer uh, for the back of the, the headlight. So let's go through the process that I use to change these bolts. Let's get at it. Okay, the first screw I'm going to remove is this one right here at the top of the headlight. And then there's one way down there that you need an extra long extension to get at. And that's where some people would take off the grill to make it that much easier to get at that. Um, and if you want to take off the grill, you have to pop off this panel up here. And you can see there's a bunch of number 10 screws holding the grill in place. You'll tip it down and pop the grill out. Now I'm using a number 10 wrench to uh, take this bolt out. You can, If you had a ratcheting uh, wrench that would be a lot easier. You can start it with a, um, a socket wrench but as soon as you get so far you can't get the uh, the bolt out because your your socket gets jammed up against the grill. There's the first one. Always set it aside somewhere where you're not going to lose it. Okay, so the second one, I have my long extension. I actu I'm actually using two just so that I can keep the uh, ratchet wrench up at a height that I am able to easily spin it. Having good light down there always helps. Great. I'll never see that again. I'm sure I'll be able to get it once the headlight housing is out, but it certainly fell off my socket. Okay, now we are in the wheel well on the passenger side. I have my uh, wheels cranked all the way to the left to get a little bit better access to this panel. And it has one of these body clips for uh, holding that panel in. I'm using one of these guys to hopefully make it easier to get it out. There's one of those usual plug type fasteners. Then you need to pull out the inner piece of that fastener. Now, I don't think there's an easy way to get this out of the wheel well, so I'm just going to try and bend it back as best I can without breaking it, so I've got good access for my hand, like such. And then inside, you can see the uh, turn signal socket right there, um, but you can't see the rest of the uh, sockets for the headlight. You've got to take the whole headlight house housing out to do this job. So inside here, there is a slide that I'll post a picture of right here um, that has to be pushed up so that it releases another part of the hold mechanism for the headlight housing. It's just above the wiring harness for the light and all you do is push it upwards and it will release the headlight housing. Tough to get in there to see that. Um, 
I'll try and show it once I got the headlight housing out, but like I said, I posted a picture right there of what that, uh, that fastener looks like. Okay, so now that we have all the fastening points released, and then there's also a, one of those plug grommets um, that basically uh, balances the headlight within the, uh, the front clip here. So basically now all you have to do is pull the headlight out, and it gets a little bit difficult with the grill here because there are tabs on the side of the headlight that may uh, cause you a bit of grief. So I'm going to go into the access panel again and give the headlight a push from behind. Oh, a dead bug just came out of there. Okay, it popped out of that grommet. Now I'm just going to pull it forward like this towards me. And there it's out. It's these tabs here that were catching on the grill. So that's uh, why you need to kind of pull it around. And it may be the reason why some people choose to uh, take the grill off to get at it. But as you can see, we didn't need to do that. I'm just going to get a rag to protect the bumper a little bit here. So this is the uh, plug or grommet that was holding in the headlight that I was able to push out from behind. Because this is a sealed unit and uh, halogen bulbs don't like to get wet or like to be touched, they're in behind the sealed um, access points. This is the high beam and this is the low beam. And because we're going to be changing both, I'm going to pull off the caps to uh, both of those. Just a, basically a quarter turn. And you can see inside where the uh, low beam bulb is sitting and the high beam, the wiring harness is kind of covering it up. So I'm just going to pull that out of the chassis like that and we'll spin off the, uh, the high beam access point. There we go. Now for the low beam, we're just going to give this also another a quarter turn out of the housing. Like that, I turned it counterclockwise. You pull it out, and there's your halogen bulb. Similar at the high beam. Quarter turn, and it comes out of the high the housing. And your high beam right there. Okay, so for the low beam, I'm gonna replace it with a, a like type bulb, which would be an H11. And the high beam bulb, I'm also gonna replace with a similar bulb which is a 9005. You can get them on Amazon. Um, there's other types you can get as well. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys are switching these out to LEDs and how that works for you. I'm just sticking with the halogens for now but I'm finding as I get older the old eyeballs aren't focusing very well at, at, as well at night so it would be better to have more light coming off them. And I'm not sure if you can just change the bulbs or if you got to change the whole housing so let me know. Now, there's just the, uh, the normal socket type here. You pull the tab forward towards you, unplug the old bulb. And the reason I'm wearing gloves is uh, halogen bulbs do not like it if you touch them. Um, I think the oils from your skin can cause either A, a chemical reaction, or B, a hot spot on the bulb, and that'll take it out in no time flat. And you'll be very unhappy because you'll be at it again. So this is my low beam bulb here. It's a little bit better than what came with OEM. Um, supposedly a bit brighter light. Um, I am maybe improving the light quality a little bit, but I don't think it's as dramatic as uh, they would have you believe. So I'm just gonna plug that uh, socket back in or the, the wiring harness, like such. And then put the bulb in and you, you can match up the little tabs on the bulb with the uh, socket itself. Put it in, about not quite a quarter turn, and that one's fastened in. Same with the high beam. We'll unplug this one, and again, a, sil a similar bulb with the Sylvania 9005. And sim same, you can uh, put it in the socket um, and give it basically a, uh, a, 
not even a quarter turn to uh, get it back in. And there we go. Had a little bit of trouble finding the right spot. There's many a dirty joke I could use there, but I won't. Got to keep this family friendly, right? And we're just putting our sealed covers back on. These do have an O-ring on them to make sure that water doesn't get back in there. There we go, new bulb sealed up. Let me just place this in partially. And I'm gonna turn on the headlights to make sure it works. Okay, let's reverse the process and put this back in. Before I put it back in though, I'm just going to put a little lithium grease on this knob so that if I have to come back in here again, it won't be uh, that hard. It was a little bit difficult trying to push it through that panel. By the way, here's this white slider that hooks on to the, uh, the headlight itself that I set, put a picture in and this you have to from the access point in the wheel well you got to push that up so that it releases the uh, headlight housing there. Okay just a little lithium grease on that nobule there and we'll put the headlight in kind of angling it towards the grill and then watch this sucker so it doesn't scratch your paint on top there they love to do things like that. So once you get it lined up in the, the headlight area, you can just sort of push it in to get that knob back in place. Um, now we're going to go back into the wheel well and slide that plastic thing down. Can't get a camera in here anyway, so I'm just going to uh, go in there and feel around. I can feel the plastic thing. It's got a bit of an L shape and I'm going to pull it down and that's what locks the the headlight in position on this side. I'm going to get uh, this bolt started in the upper part of the panel. Of course I set them aside where I'm easily going to find them. You forgot to remind me that I dropped the other bolt down there. Thanks! Got it. Okay, back to where we were. We got our uh, other bolt out from underneath where I dropped it. And now I'm gonna do the lower one. How are you gonna get that uh, bolt in there and not just have it drop off your socket? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some grease inside my socket that'll uh, help to uh, keep the uh, bolt inside of there. We have the grease on my socket, so we're going to put that in there and hopefully that will hold it enough that it won't fall off while I'm trying to fish down here to get that stupid uh, bolt back in. Let's get my light here so I can see. I wish I could get the camera in here for you, but it's basically straight down at a bit of an angle. Wiggle that around. I felt it slip in. The opportunities for innuendo when you're working on your car are just crazy. So I got it semi tightened and I'm going to put the upper one in just to make sure everything's lined up where it needs to be. Don't drop it down there. You don't want to do this again for the fourth time. Okay, I got the upper one on, not completely, and I got the lower one on. So we'll just tighten the lower one down. Seems like it goes forever. Now, wiggle it off so, and just don't pull it out because, you know, if your extensions come apart or if your nut stays down, or your socket stays down there, say goodbye to your number 10 unless you want to do it all over again. We got it all out intact. And we'll use our number 10 
to tighten up this bolt. Again, ratcheting wrenches would be ideal for this job. There we go. Five pounds of uh, torque on that, just per specification. Okay, we're back in the wheel well. Let's take this panel that we gently uh, had positioned on top of the tire. And we'll take the, uh, the lower part of the clip, plug it into its home, and then take the interior part of that clip. It appears to have a single direction that it goes in. Okay, I got it started in there, and now we'll just push it home. And that access panel is back in place. Well, that's it for this edition of Mundane Man. A relatively quick job. I would say difficulty level moderate. Moderate to easy, depending on your skill set. And again, I'd like to thank the engineers at Chrysler for making it uh, more difficult than it really needed to be. Anytime you need to go through an access panel in the wheel well, plus try and get a, a bolt that's uh, down this far into the grill area, doesn't make much sense on things that need to be replaced more frequently than uh, you would think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and all those good things, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.